welcome to Stuff from the Future. I'm Kristen Conger, a writer and podcaster here at How Stuff Works. And today I'm going to talk to you about the future of how we drink soft drinks. Okay? So I'm about to give you a glimpse of the future. All right? Got a, just a generic cola here. Opening. Coffee stirrer. So we're short on straws, how stuff works. Oh man, that's good. And that's the future of how we're going to drink it. But here's the secret. The reason why I'm talking about the future of soft drinks is that while we will probably drink our soda pop in the exact same way, there's going to be a little bit of a difference. Possibly a 25 cent difference. That's right, I'm talking about a proposed one cent per ounce tax on soft drinks in the United States. And this is coming from food policy experts out of Yale's Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity. Because studies have shown pretty conclusively that soft drinks are making us fat and diabetic and they're giving us osteoporosis and they're contributing to childhood obesity but don't let me get ahead of myself. So what will this one cent per ounce potential soda tax do? Well, according to the research, it could save us as much as 17 billion, that's with a B, 17 billion dollars in healthcare costs over 10 years. And that could translate to 26,000 fewer premature deaths, 240,000 fewer cases of diabetes, and 95,000 fewer cases of heart attack and heart disease in the United States. So some pretty big results. But the question you might have right now is, well, how much soda are we really drinking right now? And my answer is, a lot. A whole lot. This is data from 2009. The average person in the United States consumed 45 gallons of soft drinks, sports drinks, or sweetened fruit beverages just in 2009 alone, and that translates to 70,000 additional calories in our annual diet. 70,000. Now let's talk about the kids, because really the issue with this one cent per ounce soft drink tax is for the kids because on every given day in the United States, little John and little Jane are getting between 10 to 15 additional teaspoons of refined sugar in their diet just from soft drink consumption. And we wonder why there's a childhood obesity epidemic going on, folks. So they're hoping that in the same way that an alcohol and tobacco tax has curbed consumption among different states, that a similar tax could do the same thing. Now the fact that you might not know is that in 33 states, there is already a very minimal soft drink tax already in place, but it's so negligible at the cash register that people don't even know, and so they're drinking just gallons and gallons, literally, every year. So in the meantime, as we wait to see whether or not this tax policy will be instituted, what should you do? First of all, the Harvard Center for Food Policy recommends that at least half, half of your daily fluid should come from water. Just water. Not dolled up, not, not uh, jazzed up, a little suit on. Just water, okay? And the American Heart Association recommends no more than three 12 ounce cans of cola every week. So people out there who, the 3% of you, according to CNN, who drink more than four diet sodas a day, I'm talking to you. You need to cut it. Because remember, we're talking about type 2 diabetes, we're talking about osteoporosis, and we're talking about a whole lot of weight gain. 70,000 calories could be cut every year just by cutting out soda. That could be a penny worth spending. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.